It's, it's the, the Jay Tay Show. show. It's, it's the, the Jay Tay Show. It's the Jay Tay Show. It's the Jay Tay Show. Season greetings. God bless you to each of you. Welcome to the J Tay Show. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the J Tay Show. You waiting on me to do my jingle, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I never know, so. Okay, I was about to bust it on out too because I had the right rhythm. I had it. Okay, I'm trying to be go. I'm trying to be calm today. Today for a reason. We go we are gonna see. I I am so looking forward to getting into this next part of brushing, y'all. Bishop. See, Bishop doesn't overtake me like he does. Bishop just comes on and just sits. Yeah, he just cut right there. I mean, like, golly, and just you completely fade. Like, it's me and Bishop. This is the J. Bishop show. Golly. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. God bless you. Again, we are studying the book Crushing, and today we are getting right into it. Uh, this time next Saturday, we will have experienced the Shattered Conference and the things that Tay is planning for this conference has me excited. I have already registered. I paid for somebody up. Shantae, did somebody uh, pay, take that extra ticket? Danielle. Okay, well, you weren't supposed to take a set of name, but oh, God. Well, okay, thank you, Danielle, for coming to the, to the audition. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, well, well, no. Okay, but anyway, all right. So I was trying to say that if somebody wanted to come, that there was an extra ticket. You know, I probably shouldn't, but I have this. It's not a conviction, but it's a push to get those that are in need there. I said it from the beginning, and I'm still saying it now, that if you want to come, come but contact me before you come because there's a reason for that so if the opportunity is still available but don't show up saturday and say oh i want to come but you could have contacted ahead of time because this will be out before next week so and she has the deadline was on the first and i think she just shared that people will register today. today and so people are still finding out but i'm telling you all uh, this episode will be released on the 7th of January and the following Saturday uh, it's it's the conference and so if you if you see this on the 7th or even the 8th or 9th and you feel convicted that you need to be there uh, because so many of our lives have been we we've talked about talked about in past conferences and experiences that I've had mending broken pieces mm -hmm. but to me when we talk about shattered and one of the things that Shantae and I have noticed about studying the book crushing is that we've seen the word shatter more than once and it's like in these past two weeks leading up to this conference we've seen the word shatter and it just takes on a whole new perspective of being broken being broken is one thing because the the idea is that you could put it back together again mm -hmm. but my thought in looking at this is is if i'm shattered this is a level of crushing that it looks absolutely impossible to be put back together again and what i love about that is the, is the words that that we understand that god specializes mm -hmm. in things that seem impossible and the word of god also confirms that to say the things that are impossible with man are possible with god and so thank god for this conference and i'm just looking forward to that word really being expounded on we've heard from two of the speakers who were going to be at the conference and both of them came on fired up and stirred up stirred us up and then what was com absolutely confirmation for me that we're in the right time and the right season doing the right thing and that this vision that Shantae has given. And I'm, I'm just getting a chance to see the behind the scenes. It's kind of working me up even now because I'm seeing that God really has put a powerful vision in her for this conference mm -hmm. and just the things behind the scenes that she's working on to ensure that the, the attendees get the message uh, just in the in the things that will be there 
that that is very powerful. And so I know the things along with the word that we're going to receive is going to be a powerful experience. So I thought it would be befitting to start this broadcast out really, really emphasizing this conference because I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's because I have inside knowledge and it's something with having inside knowledge. Uh, you know, Tay, I, we, I'm, I'm representing I'm with my right. partner's house toboggan and uh, because on this past Sunday, which was New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. uh, we were at the Potter's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tay went out, so I think she was supposed to be using the restroom. And so she took a tour <laughs> and found this hat. She knows I love to wear black skull caps. And uh, this one has really become my favorite because it's just something, it's like the look of this on my head for me. Just I love the way it looks. And Bishop, I haven't shaved, so I'm repping, I'm repping the Potter's house uh, paraphernalia along with pushing your book now. Okay. Yeah. Anytime you're ready to come on and be interviewed on the J Tay show or the J Bass Today show, I'm ready. I stay ready. And I'm gonna wear my uh Potter's House paraphernalia as well. But she was she was uh out perusing and she got this for me. And uh I'm wearing it today again because I haven't shaved, but I wanted I wanted to just kind of emphasize the impact the Potter's House has had on us. You know, it's it's so crazy that you even said that. We have not talked about this before we recorded. Yeah. So I didn't know you was going to talk about that, but I was talking today, and it just it seemed like Sunday was so far away. Or it okay. Just, it didn't seem like it was last Sunday we were at the Potter's house, but I was telling somebody today. I was like, I don't know, just something about being there. Yeah. It's just a difference. It's a difference. Like it's a huge. Yeah. Even though we know that it's a. The atmosphere. Uh, yeah, amazing. the atmosphere. We know that it's a show that, well, not a show. It's a. It's being broadcast worldwide. No, that's not. Oh, what okay. Trying to say a like production, they produced it. Right. Yeah. And we know that it's a little bit extra for New mm -hmm. Year's. Yeah. But it still didn't take away God's presence. In it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you know absolutely, how some people turn showish. Yeah. And it just turns into that. Yeah. And not a worship experience. Yeah. So, you know, and it, it just, it makes a difference. Like, it didn't matter about how many people was there, how many people was around. It still was just like, it's personal. It, it was really like, still you personal. God and like, yes. Bishop, yes. like, he was right there in front of us. Yeah. Like, did he look at me? You know, like, was he talking right to me at that moment? So, yeah, it being there is just different. I don't know. I don't know. It's just different now that you can watch it online and then just being able to sit there and just bask in the presence. I think one of the things about being present to is knowing that there are so many others who have also gathered mm -hmm. with expectation. Uh, now, you know, Bishop has said this before that if you come in to work a deal and all this kind of stuff, this might not be the place for you. But I, I just wholeheartedly believe that there are many of us that when we do get a chance to go there, we're seeking something from God. Uh, it's not even, and I, I'll just be honest, as much as I have been blessed by Bishop's ministry in multiple ways, uh, just watching, even looking at, at the Good Soil app and, and the things that that means, what that means, because in my eyesight, seeing good soil, seeing mega care and uh, the Tory initiative uh, for Texas reentry uh, and all of that for offenders, that mm -hmm. all of those type of ideas are things that Jay Bass would do mm -hmm. if Jay Bass had those resources yeah. and the team around that we would, we yeah. would be doing that. And so Good soil is your talent to give services on the app. Yeah, because that's, that's what yes, you're exactly. That's just the app because people yeah. they, and y'all, this is something that you can download, mm -hmm. and it's just we better promote. We so promoting the day, <laughs> okay? Up there, it was thousands. It, I saw at least twenty thousand people. And the thought of that is, you know, the the thought for me is, I, it's probably two hundred thousand. But anyway, the thought is seeing someone who actually does have those resources. Now, mm -hmm. you know, part of my thought has been, I don't have those resources. Mm -hmm. And so 
it, the least I could do. If I'm seeing this man doing these things that I know are within my heart to do and to see that are benefiting society and being a blessing to people, that I have a responsibility to partner and I haven't, I haven't done so in the fullness of what I desire to do. But because I realize that now, it's like something, there's, there's something to this. And uh, even as I, you, you know, we were, we have to set up a profile on good soil mm -hmm. and looking at the questions, I'm thinking, golly, I don't, I've been stuck at the, what makes you unique because these type of ideas are ideas that I would have, but Bishop's already doing it. Bishop has a team and they're already working these type of things. And so what makes me special? What makes me unique? If somebody already has these type of visions and whatever, but there is a work for each one Everybody. of us to do. Everybody. And part of sharing this is that uh, I didn't realize, you know, like you saying that Sunday has come and gone and we've already had another sermon or lesson released by the Potter's House on Wednesday. And I still haven't gotten through it, but the words that Pastor Roberts is speaking. Sometimes I wonder if anybody else notices this, but sometimes it's like things that I'm posting before a word is released then a sermon comes back to confirm it mm -hmm. and 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 even in times give me the language to express what I've been feeling. And he was saying that, you know, there are some people who are satisfied with just being saved. Mm -hmm. I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven, and that's it. Yeah. And you know, that's a that's a, a, a an okay place. But for me, for so long and and I haven't I may not have handled it right in moving around from church to church and searching in my search for more and trying to figure out what is it that I'm looking for and longing for but he gave me the 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 thought that and and confirmation that I'm not satisfied you're telling me and I'm reading in the word that I'm created in his image and then on top of that, I'm seeing God keep me from sickness after sickness, experience after experience. What have I been left here for? What is all of this crushing for? Where is the wine that is supposed to be coming from this life? And then, you know, uh, I had a, a comment on one of my posts that was a lengthy comment. And the young lady, uh, she used to work on the JBAX Ministries team. She moved away uh, when she got married. But she she shared some things about her experience with me. I think I was asking about being unique or something anyway. Uh, and she just shared her experience and really went into see some things. And the thought came to mind of how I felt in times past where my perspective, and I believe I'm leading this into uh, our lesson tonight, uh, one of the thoughts was my perspective. My perspective was jacked up about my own life and my, my experience with God. Today, I did an interview with Dr. Jennifer Gilbert as she prepares to release her next book, her 40th book. She will be 40, and she's only turning 49 this year. And you get to hear a lot more of her testimony in that video. It will be released on next Thursday at 2 p.m. So stay tuned for the Jay Vance Today Show. But it was a very powerful. In fact, I think the video still has not com finished converting on my laptop as we are talking. So it's it will most likely be a two-part interview. And I still need to have her back because she, she said some things that I still didn't get a chance to unpack that were running through my head just like Ian had. Up. And so I've had some amazing guests. We've had some amazing guests. And I'm just uh, telling you, I'm really looking forward to what God is going to do in and through this. But the thought is, we, we've we had this jacked up perspective in times past. And in this journey of becoming, this, this journey of being crushed over and over to become who God made us, he's slowly changing our perspective and bringing us into the fullness. You know, we, we started the Jay Tay Show just on Facebook doing something, just kind of talking about 
things that were bothering us in the season at that moment and just kind of talking through it with one another and hopefully trying to include other people in the conversation. And uh, we've still remained uh, at this point where we're having conversations about life, whether anybody joins us uh, in the audio, a Zoom room or an audience uh, to, to share or not. In fact, we're not even doing this live today. This is just us behind the scenes recording. And that's because people don't normally join us in the audience. And the thought that I'm having is we're being brought into a new season. The fact that we were at the Potter's house yeah. to start this year off again, it just leaves me filled with so much expectation mm -hmm. of what God can and will do in and through us mm -hmm. this year. Uh, we often see ourselves and the things that we've been through, but I, I brought up this show and the fact that this is the fulfillment of dream. This is a dream come true. And we don't know what God can and will do through us being obedient to be here. And so uh, as I as I looked at this, this lesson part, uh, we, read, we read up to about chapter six today. And um, Bishop starts to talk about Jesus and his experience. And I really want to do some in, some more in-depth study, but we sing this song for Christmas, Mary, Did You Know? And I have really been dealing with that today. And I've been thinking about several scripture references uh, as it relates to Mary's experience with Jesus the mother's experience with her child because when we when we saw Jesus being left behind at the temple when when he when he told her and Joseph that i must be about my father's business mary kept these things in her heart the word tells us that she kept that in her heart she she remembered that and so then one of the next times we see their interaction together is at the party and, and Mary saying, Jesus, uh, you can do something about this wine shortage. And my thought is, what did Mary know? You get what I'm saying? What did Mary know about her child that would even make her think that he could do something about that situation. What had he done behind the scenes that is not recorded in biblical history that Jesus did as her child that she was privy to? Because you think about her. I'm, I, the main thing that I was thinking about is her journey of faith. You, you're picked out and chosen and you find yourself pregnant and giving birth knowing you've never had sex all the things that are going along with that the all i mean it's we think about this in in just reading it since but if you literally at even a, try to attempt to put yourself in a situation of being in those times without technology and mm -hmm. and and the way livelihood was the threats that were lingering. There was so much murder. There was so much chaos. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus at, at a young age was under threat because King Herod knew that he'd been born. And so all of this, all of this circling around, you're living under threat, but you're standing as, as you're living as Mary. We're, we're walking this out as Mary for, real quick. You're living as Mary and you're watching all of this unfold around you, but you're watching God protect you. And now you're having a chance to watch this child grow and you're seeing him doing things. You're witnessing things that he's not like other children. There's some, there is really something special because of course this is your child. So you're, you're a mother really watches her children. And so she's watching him. And I'm sure in those times, you know, mother, that was the mother's job to tend to the home. So she has a front row seat and watching this child evolve. And that's why it kind of baffles me that at 12, you're able to leave him behind and go several days journey out without realizing that he's there because you know what you, I'm sure you've been watching him. You want to protect him because you know, his, 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 his something special about him. But then you get to this, this party and he does this. And then ultimately it leads him to a cross. What, 
and the mother and and as a mother you're still there and you're watching your child suffer this and 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 the way bishop paints this picture about yeah. jesus yeah you get what i'm saying yeah. and so you're watching this what kind of faith you know i i mentioned the the topic of, mm -hmm. of the song mary did you know the title of the song mary did you know but Mary, as you were watching him grow up, did you know, did you have any inkling that all of this, watching him heal people and, and, and blind eyes being restored and all of this, did you even imagine that it was going to lead him to the cross? Did you even take it even further to think that after the cross that he could be uh, sent into a position with his name that is above all name that because he endured the cross because he endured the suffering because he endured the shame that he now has the seat at the right hand side of the father that he has his place of of of, of glory now that he would not have had had he not have gone through that and even as I say that, I think about Bishop. I think about those that are our inspirations that we look at and see what they have reached and attained the seven degrees of a person like Dr. Gilbert who came through all the things that you are hearing in the broadcast. These people, you see the accolades and we hear that we've heard this so many times, you see the glory, but we really cannot comprehend the story and that's why, you know, I, I think even as I'm sitting here with you, Tate, that we, we've talked about this, that we don't, we really have no clue who we are becoming. Uh, I want to say part, I, I cannot remember the fullness of the title, but it was something about the me in me that I did not see. There's a me in me that what has been hidden because of what I've been through. What I've been through has clouded my perspective. And so uh, I'm sorry to tell you, I have just really been going on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, God. You need something right The me in me that I did not see. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. While she is right. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, God. That's you, okay. We, we can listen back. You might have to go back and listen, y'all. Okay. okay, you we might have to go back and listen. Well, you, I mean, you still need to write it down because you're going to need it for next weekend. But it'll be aired. So I could always go back and watch the video. Well, you, that's, we just. But you know what doing. I was thinking about? Um, How this first Sunday. Mm -hmm. The very first Sunday of, of the, the year, year. Mm -hmm. and we were reading literally. Do you think that was ironic? Like how we literally just had to read. We Bishop just broke down all of this literally the day before. Well, the day of. Oh the yeah, we get ready to go into communion. Yeah, yeah, you know, I did think about communion. Reading. We said before communion, the story never should get stale. That's right. And when I was reading, it's like I had a whole nother just. I had like chills. I was like, okay, hearing it. But just, you know, he, reading how Bishop broke it down. All right, Bishop. I had been dealing with this, and I want to say it's Pastor Roberts as well. One, somebody somebody uh, confirmed this thought to me, uh, that when Jesus came, he gave up his omniscience. He gave up his... Uh, being all, you know, all knowing and, and all seeing. And I, be, it was my, I was starting to get convicted of this toward the end of the year for some reason. I, and that's why I'm, in some ways, I just know that God puts things on my heart and my mind. And so it's like, why am I thinking about this? And uh, it was, it was, you know, I had the last message that I had to share was about prayer and God has been dealing with me on prayer. And I closed with talking about how often Jesus is found in scriptures praying. Mm -hmm. And as I was thinking about that, it can it, you know, it, and I'm steady meditating. I meditate on, on, uh, uh, sermons and things, even after it's been shared. Uh, cause you know, a lot of times like I miss sharing this or I could have shared that, you know, 
but then something else God will reveal something else as I'm thinking and 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 just kind of meditating on his word and that Jesus had to pray so many times because he knew that that was the only way that he would know that he would have insight mm -hmm. is through the one who can give that insight who is omniscient yeah. who is all-knowing and all-powerful and so that was his contact and that's why i believe so much in the need for prayer yeah. i have been finding especially after sharing this sermon and it's just been a renewed uh reviving for prayer mm -hmm. that i have just been praying more and more and it's just like in my secret place i'm finding myself just talking to god talking to god because that's our access. We are, um, we're sitting in this room and we have no clue what is going on around us. Yeah. I've been watching Madam Secretary, girl, are we going to get to the book? I'm just, I'm <laughs> full today. Uh, watching Madam Secretary and some of the things that they have been addressing are real life threats that often as mere uh, citizens without access to all of this information we're unaware of uh just like uh, what the one of the last episodes i watched they were thinking about sending ai bots into warfare and the truth is ai is a part of our society now and who's to say in 10 to 20 years they're not robots standing in our homes to help us like we've seen on shows and then another 20 years that they're trying to take over the world and eradicate humanity because they see the mess in us that we see in ourselves. But the, you know, then that that is the truth. And the sad part, what they were trying to say is the, that the AI, again, what we have seen in the shows, it's like they're setting us up for this is that they can't make that discernment that we can. All they see is is the mess that humanity has made of this earth and with one another. And a lot of times that is the only saving grace that we have because so many of us, we see the negativity in one another. We see our issues, but we don't look at the fact that this is a soul. This isn't just another vessel or another thing that exists in the earth. This is a soul that is at stake. Somebody's life is at stake. And so I'm thinking about Jesus walking through seeing souls. One of the things that uh, Miss uh, Lady Fertick from Elevation Church said in a sermon that really got my attention. I'm like, God, you are really speaking to me in some ways. Is that the, the disciples were feeding the, the thousands were looking at the people that they had to work and, and the things that they had to do to help them. But Jesus, his, his perspective was compassion. He saw them as souls who were in need of help. And while we go walk pe by people and they're just people, they're just, that's just another blank face that we pass in by. We have no concern about their issues or what they're dealing with, what's on their mind, what's on their heart. But Jesus is concerned. And, you know, I know I'm guilty because I look at some people and I just get, uh, I just don't even want to even try to start a conversation. But you can tell something is going on and so many people are dealing with things. And that's why I'm like, God, I'm sharing this because I, you know, I'm, I'm really in a place of God working on me. I know I am because I'm not satisfied. I want to be able to, in those situations, be able to, if nothing else, give a smile or a word of encouragement that's going to help that person through. Because the truth is, all of us mm -hmm. are being crushed on a daily basis in some form or another. That we have our good days, but even on the good days, you can have something to come through, see something that crushes you all over again. It's just like, God, late does it ever end? And the truth yeah. is, as long as we are alive, it never ends. Mm -hmm. And so this is the time for us to really grasp a hold of this. I feel, I've feel i been saying to Shantae, and I, I still hold to it, that I believe God is preparing us for something. He's getting us ready for the measure of crushing that's going to come from 
uh, where God is taking us. And it, I, you know, I think about the Garden of Gethsemane, maybe, and maybe that's why I'm feeling such pressure is because I wonder if for sure Jesus knew exactly that this was going to lead him. He had to because of some of the things that he said yeah. leading up to that it was leading him to being crushed in that way. Uh, and we don't know the fullness of what, but something's coming and God is preparing us for it. And so it's my prayer that as we have taken this time to study, and the truth is, uh, this may just be for us. We're recording it here and making it available worldwide. This is available worldwide through YouTube. And then we share it on our Facebook pages and profile. But it may just be for us in preparation for what God has in store. Okay, you said a lot. I'm going okay. to no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try I'm to full. remember everything. You said. I'm going way back, way back. You've been talking about uh, how you can have something in your heart and in a sermon is like no, it's confirming confirm for you. Mm -hmm. What I think about that is like, that's God telling you, like, I see, I know, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working on it. You, yeah. do, you, do, yeah. you know, like, that's what yes, I get yes, from that yes, is yes. that that's and that's and it's just crazy because even like you can hear something and then you can log on to something and hear it again and you're no. like okay is that God giving me a sign or is that just me just you know saying it but when you hear it confirmed through God's word then you have no doubt yeah. that God is giving you confirmation that's right. that he got you he knows and I was talk I was thinking also um there's a guy on TikTok I do not know his name he walks around and gives people random hugs. Mm. He just walks in the store. And when he walks up to him, he just have his arms out for a hug. And some people scratch their face. Some people, you know, they tell him no. But they, somebody asked him, why do you do that? And he said, because sometimes all a person needs is a smile and a hug. Mm. You never know what that is saving them. You know, they could be literally hanging on by a thread. And so this lady, she took it and she broke it down. You know how people do videos, they take things. And so she said, what if we all just walk around and think about the next person next to us or the car next to us or our neighbors? Like if we could just go a little extra mile to do something that you never know, it could save their life or it could lead them to Christ. Yeah. And I thought about that when you said that too, because do we even do that? Yeah. You know, we pass up people on the street um, and you know, they said we could be entertaining angels, but we don't. Yeah. Because we still miss our opportunity. That's right. I'm guilty, girl. We, we, I yeah. mean, we miss it. Yeah. Yeah. You said some people you may not even want to talk to, but mm -hmm. that ain't strange. That's people that we know. Yeah. Right. So you it's you're right. Different, you know, like, right. Could still be people that we know. Wow. We just wow. have to be careful. That's that wow. mindful thing. Wow. And yeah. we have to be careful because. You don't know, and you don't know that that person can be your step to the next level wow. or your blessing in disguise. Yeah. But because, yeah. you know, I mean, you know guilty of that. Yeah. Because there's people I pass by that I know. Lord, help me. Okay, please help. In the store today, and I knew they was going to talk when they saw me, yeah. and I went the extra uh -oh. way around. Oh, and, no. Uh -oh. And, and ah. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> You better know. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Wow. 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 And now, I ain't that no attention. Wow. And honey, when she saw my truck, she jumped out. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you. Yeah. That's yeah. why you got to be careful because I hadn't talked to her, but I didn't want to talk to her because she talked a lot. Yeah. But oh, she God. said some things to me that really yeah. encouraged me mm -hmm. because she was like, what you doing? I said, I've been in Hobby Life for the 1500 time, you know, and I was just kind of just ranting and she was like, you know, she encouraged me mm -hmm. to keep going and you know that all that she, all this work next week would not even be, none of that happened over the past few weeks will even matter That's next true. week once, you know, and I mean, I know that, but it's just something about the preparation, the preparation and, getting, yes, and then yes. hearing it, you know, for somebody who won't even, you know, she's not going to be there, but she's not even going to church actually. So, you know, to hear her saying things like that, I was like, okay, Lord, like, and I actually, at that moment, I took your prayer pump and I repented mm -hmm. in that moment because I almost missed my blessing mm -hmm. because I didn't want to talk. Wow. 
And you know, but you know, we both guilty of that because especially when you know a person is gonna talk and talk and talk. And I'm guilty of doing that on these shows, but behind the scene, all that talking, Lord Jesus, if it's not leading us to something, you know, I feel like at least we talking about something on here, but golly, and but at least, you know, that's the thing about it is you never know what that kind of conversation is gonna lead you to. Um, and then something else you said, shoot, Jay. I'm gonna start taking notes when you're talking so I can have them. I'm, I feel like it's something, it's something you just said that you just threw me off to that you just said that I really wanted to lay hold to. Mm. We better go in the thought girl. I don't know. See, that's why we need y'all to join us. So somebody could be chiming in right now while we and reminding us what our we're own talking about. Mm -hmm. thought process. I have no idea what it is. I know I'm, I, I know this has to do with uh, interaction. Oh, girl. Okay. I was thinking, because I, I, I'm just laughing already because I know you're going to laugh. I already know. One of the experiences about going to the Potter's House and really a lot of churches that really, it, it tests my faith. It works me in a way, but it, it it comes with the territory of interacting with others. Is this touch your neighbor stuff? <laughs> and you know what? Oh, it's so my sad. gosh. It's been around you. I got that spirit on me because I don't even do it when they tell me to. And the mother next to me at the potter's house, she held my hand multiple times oh, in church. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't let me do it. Be okay with it, you yeah. know, but that is sad. That is sad. You know, I was thinking. Tell your neighbor, touch your neighbor. Oh, oh my. my. No, it no. Just, it just becomes a bit no. much, especially when you get the ass to do it five no. plus times during one service. It's like, my gosh. Mm. But it brings to mind exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And what just came to mind. Needs what you just said is it made me think I may not be able to talk to Bishop or any of the official staff at the church, but what if that neighbor is the person that I'm, so, I'm there to reach that is, is supposed to reach me because so they're because he goes saying that's the thing. Lord help. You know what? What I was thinking I need to do. Mm. What I need to do is to, you know, create some of my own J Bass things to put in my neighbor's hand when I sit down to <laughs> let them know I'm grateful that we're here and that this is my way of reaching out. You know, that I if the pastor says to touch my neighbor or say something to my neighbor, we've already spoken. <laughs> Because you're just getting off the organ mm -hmm. most of the time that the pastor is, the preachers are are getting ready to preach. And you coming down for being worked up. You ain't thinking about passing that to no neighbor when you first sit down. Girl, I have it in my suit coat oh, so and I'm going to come and sit down and come sit there. She doesn't talk to nobody. That's just that's pitiful. We are not letting our life shine. Forgive us, Lord. Well, in some ways we are, but no, you know, it just that's that that is not, you know. That is crazy. It just becomes too much. And see, that, those are the kind of things it, you know, even as you're saying that, that how far are we willing to go? That it, it is so simple just to say to your neighbor what the pastor said to say, or to touch your neighbor. And we really don't know sometimes what why God put it and now sometimes you know a lot of times I and now I'm just being honest a lot of times I feel like and we've gotten so off tonight girl but this is good we needed this uh for our first show this year our <laughs> second show this year oh no this will be our first show this year okay we just having a conversation now we might not get to the book today but anyway uh that a lot of times I feel like the pastor is saying that just to fill up words but what if that's not the case what if God is telling, is leading the pastor? Because I feel, you know, for multiple pastors to do it, I feel like y'all are just saying this just to, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is. Uh, or to get your neighbor to wake you up. Mm -hmm. But what if God is really leading them to 
have the neighbor to say something because that neighbor is able to touch you in a way that they aren't able to touch you. The neighbor repeating what they just said to you may hit you in a way that... Because you can hear it different, yeah. Yeah, and you're looking into the eyes of somebody else. You know, I was, I'm thinking about the Potter's House experience and the, the young ladies that were sitting to my left. I'm so focused on what I'm there for. You know what I'm saying? I'm not into this. I'm not up for this uh, touching my neighbor and trying to high five and, and fist bump and all this kind of stuff. And toward the end of the service, I finally broke, you know, because I had gotten what I needed. And I was just thinking, okay, J. Bass, now you can, now you can uh, talk to your neighbor. And I'm looking over and I looked at this girl in her eyes and I'm like, I, I, I'm thinking of you in one perspective, but I never looked at you. I'm thinking that she's, you know, one thing and she was something, her and the other neighbor were totally different look-wise from what I, because I hadn't even looked at them. Okay. I saw them, but I was so focused. And when you know, I was in, in tears and engulfed in worship and engulfed in thought and praise and prayer. It was just so much going on and plus being tired and all of that, that I had not looked at them. And when I, it was just something different when I actually turned and looked at them. And it made me think, you have missed an entire service uh, with these neighbors that could have possibly been something more uh, because you refused to come out of your comfort zone because of your preconceived perspective and to just do what the pastor said and talk to him. Isn't that something? Well. Uh -oh. Truly. Uh-oh. Because, you know, I, I mean, I think I looked at you a few times, but I didn't pay them no attention. I really, I don't even know who's sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just thought about that because we the row was so short, I should mm -hmm. be able to tell you who was sitting there. And I, I don't know. Yeah. But I just, like I say, the people that were sitting next to me, you know, she forced me to. <laughs> so it was a different. <laughs> yeah. You know, they did not force me. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. She held my hand. Oh, God. She locked her oh, fingers in mine. Oh. Like this. And I was, I, I had my hand like this, and she purposely stretched my fingers out and put her hand in mine. And I was like, I got bothered. <laughs> and it's so sad because I, don't know, I, know. I was crying when I, I got bothered. Yeah, it brought you right on out. Yeah, right out, right out. And that's so sad. That is so sad. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> God is working on us. He's working on us, Shantae. He's working on us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know, mm. I, I put it together, mm. but mm. I just could not believe that he was forcing me to lock hands for her like that. But when she did it, I, I, you know, I didn't feel any pushback or anything. Um. But, you know, by the end of the service, you know, Bishop had us all come up to the altar and she gave me a hug and she was like, it was so nice meeting you. And I was like, you too. But at first, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. not feeling it, yeah. you know, because I had coughed a few times and they pulled a mask all up. But you know, that, uh, that's the bad part is that uh, we get in uh, fleshly stuff and we can really miss, you know, and they were there visiting for the first time. Oh, wow. That How did you find that out? She asked me when I came back from getting your beanie. Where we oh, yeah, yeah. Where you get, uh -huh. And I told her it was out there. And so she said that they were e-members. Oh, okay. And that they had flown in wow. to be there for that night. Wow. And mm. so, her, you know, her husband started talking. And I think you had gotten up and went to the restroom. And so she just went to work, honey, after you, after she said, well, ain't nobody sitting next to her. Let me talk to her. Wow. And she was just so nice. Wow. She was really nice, but I still don't want to hold her hand, but I felt And she bad. still later forced your hand. She uh -huh. forced it. She made me high five. Oh. You know, when Bishop said, tell your neighbor, she tapped me and told uh -huh. me. And uh -huh. I looked over at her, I was like. <laughs> she only knew. Oh, my God. Do that, man. Okay.
Um, but then I actually said it back to him, but then he told her, tell seven people. Then the people in front of us uh, turned around doing it. Shame it's tell right. you. Shame Bishop, 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 Bishop. Go tell your people. Oh God. And you know what? And and it's it, it really is convicting because I made out of that seven, because one turned to me, I only interact with him. But it's just like it becomes too much. But is but it really too much? Yeah, is it really it too much? True. Is it really too much? It's, it's and we don't know, you know, even though those interactions to me can really be superficial at the outset of it just thinking about the impact i didn't i didn't even know until now which is a whole week later that this lady had this kind of impact with you i i figured you were down there in your own zone like i was in my own you know <laughs> yeah the, the little things yeah that it does make a difference things. yes it, it made a difference. Mm -hmm. Because at first it was one way, but then I, I shifted to another. And then I was, like I said, when she grabbed my hand and forced me to, I was like. You know, I, something about me and being forced. So, oh, we. Oh, my she, God. I mean, she spread every finger of mine to squeeze her <laughs> fingers in between. And she and when Bishop said squeeze, the memory said squeeze the face back into your neighbor. Oh. She squeezed my hand so tight. Oh. And we was locked. Her nails was like in my skin. Oh. And I was like. She had to say, don't, don't get lose focus. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. And I guess she kind of felt me pull back and she let go a little bit. Mm. And she just rubbed my arm. She <laughs> rubbed I said, oh, mother. You just have no idea you said next old evil person. Oh, okay. But the God is still working on you. God. Yeah. 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 And see, it's a reason we were led this way in conversation. I took my book and put it away. Wow. I'll be back. That, I feel totally convicted about that. That's the reason we had to have this conversation tonight. And I just know that tomorrow church pastor's gonna say it. I know he is. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna look up that for you and see what you do with it. <laughs> but and I'm sure I'm gonna look back at you. But the better thing is that I see oh, the same person at church. Mm -hmm. And we talk in church, but mm -hmm. what do you say? Tell your neighbor, neither one of us say it. Wow. wow. We don't, and I sit by the same person. Wow. So yeah, we we got to do. I got I've got to do better in yeah. that, Lord. I am making a vow. I'm I'm really leaning toward my my J Bass stuff to hand yeah. out. It's not necessarily to say that I'm not going to turn to you, but I don't want this to be just some superficial moment. You know that we really do. We really maximize those moments, even as I'm thinking about. You know, I may not be able to meet Bishop. But if I if I go to the potter's house and I sit next to someone and Bishop tells me to uh, touch my neighbor or something, if I put something of mine in my in their hand, especially being a life coach, being a minister, and just let them know if you ever need prayer, if you need someone to talk to, you know, what kind of impact would that have? What would that have if we if if we are ready to let that person know? I know that the pastor just said to to touch your neighbor or something but i don't want you to just think that this is a, just another, another something the pastor is saying or doing this i want this to be an intentional moment for us to make contact because even though we might not have known that we would sit next to each other in this service god knew mm -hmm. and because he knew i'm just letting you know who i am and that i'm here and available if you need me what what kind of impact what that have that's that's where I was leading to earlier, uh, and you know we've evolved into this whole conversation because it's the truth that we this is this is not innate in us. It's not us. This is out of our character to make these kind of thing uh, moves and and to do these kind of things. But what is God? What what if God is really leading us into doing more in those situations and really really being involved in it? Okay, you want to get into it? Try to. At least we can finish uh, this chapter, I think. Oh, no, we got a lot of pages, so we can get make some headway. I don't even know how long we've been on, Shante. Oh, we have time. Okay. Okay, if we just do about another 20 minutes. Okay. I'm going back to page uh, 78. I'm not sure if we did this, but it, it starts out, it's called shared suffering. 
And now uh, it says, this is the time to recover those who have been crushed and to recover our humanity within our own crushing. That really stood out to me because there are so many of us who have been crushed and that there is a reason for that crushing. And so now it's time to recover and to restore and understand why we have been crushed and to get the, 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 the result that was intended in the crushing to come forth. You have anything on that? Yeah, well, no, because we we went over this. Remember, I pointed out shattered from the windshield. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm I'm back at suffering in isolation, and why did no one notice? Okay, I remember uh, reading that. No, why did no one notice their silent screen? But you know what? That just I, and I'm getting off subject. That brings us back to the to what we just was talking yeah, about. Why did no one? That, so we needed to come back to this. Thank God. So <laughs> that. Mm. That person me, next I, to you. Wow. That's okay. I got your back. That is wow. the, that is wow. what Bishop is saying. That person did so not know. And, and like something. you said, you didn't look at the woman in, next to you in the eyes until the end. And I still don't know who she is. But what if she had a silent something, you know, in that our words of saying squeeze the faith back into her, that person wow. could have done it, but we missed her silent screen because of wow. our own. Um, um, yeah. Oh, we. Wow. Isn't that something? And you know what? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I did I, one thing I noticed about her that got on my nerves at one point, because I'm trying to, you know, be in service, and I know that you know they had the QR codes and stuff up or, or different things that was going on, but she's just flipping through her phone, and that was all. It was all in a way I can see that and I'm saying that because in a way it seemed like a silent screen, you know, on your home screen, like. When you flip through the pages, you're looking for an app. Mm -hmm. But if you're flipping back and forth, you know, is your mind even on what you're looking for? Or are you are you lost in what, what app you're trying to find? Because you're you're flipping through multiple pages and back and forth. And I'm like, what is she doing? Just put the phone down. That's what I'm thinking, you know. But in a way as I'm reliving that in this moment and just seeing that, because that was the only thing I noticed of her. Uh, it, and, and I'm thinking, was that in a way like a silent scream? I'm sitting here in this moment, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to handle this moment. I'm confused and my confusion is coming out in flipping through this phone, not knowing even what app to open. And she would open up app and close. And I, you know, and I, I only noticed this in a short glimpse I, I noticed her back and forth, and I saw her opening that look and close it and start. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know? And so, yeah. what happens when we are the ones that God put in position to notice somebody's silent screen and we miss it? And then, you know, the, the reason I think that it, it starts to take meaning is because we've had that silent screen. Just like it's talking about those who have been crushed and didn't recover our humanity within our own crushing, that we we've been crushed too. We've screamed silently as well, and so it would seem like as people who have suffered in silence, and it seemed like nobody cared or could help, that we should be able to see that in somebody else. Mm, mm, mm. And it says, "Are those who suffer." Uh, communicating on a frequency we simply cannot hear. And and that's the thing. I mean, I wonder, you know, even when we were dealing with things, but my part of my thought has been, you know, how uh, people talk to you about uh, how you don't smile or this. And I, I've always thought, you know. How, oh, God. Uh, no, it wasn't bad, though. Uh, it wasn't bad. Well, with the conversation you and I had about me and how I, you know, my presence can affect a room. And so I've tried to do better in when I'm, you know, because I never know if I'm going to be feeling it or not. I try to be always feeling it, but it's, uh, anyway, uh, I, I really, I try, you know, it prompts me to pray more, especially when something gets my nerves really bad, really quick. 
And I'm like, okay, you got to get it together. You know, it's constant to pray. But thinking about that, um, there are times some of us are screaming loudly with our facial expressions or with our mannerisms that somebody picks up that we're not in the mood, that something has happened, something is going on, and there's still no help. There's still no real support. And there's, you know, sometimes somebody may say something and it may be the wrong thing or they don't know what to do. And so then have you helped the situation? And so that that just kind of makes me think, you know, it, it, maybe sometimes we can look at that individual and tell that they're dealing with something. But part of my apprehension has been, what, what can I do to help? Right. Maybe, that's and that's- those prayer prompts come in. Uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to get to. Help, you know, you said with um, whatever you said about being in a room, mm -hmm. whether the person can realize it or not, or rather, you know, you feel it, but that can also cause you to pray more to to help to God to ask Him to help you in that situation because clearly they don't see it but you feel it. Mm -hmm. And well, even if they see it and you know that they see it, that can that makes us have that prayer prompt time mm -hmm. to say, okay, Lord, like whatever's going on, help them. Mm -hmm. Just help them because ain't nothing I can do, but help them. And it's pray. And that, it's that's pray. exactly what I was leading to because maybe, you know, and, and it, it brings back the thought of Jesus and his prayer life. He, he wasn't, when he gave up his deity to to put on a flesh suit, he gave up that that all knowledge and all of that. And so, in order to be endued with the power to do something about it, to be uh, empowered to see or to uh, touch and to be able to do something about it, he had to access prayer. And so, you know, my charge is just exactly what you said to allow that to prompt us to at least pray. I may not have the money. I may not have a better solution, but I do have access to the one who does. You know, I hate to cut you off. No, no. But it makes me think when you tell a person, like I'm, I'm just going to say an example, somebody going through something and you say, I'll be praying for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you say you're forever. Sometimes I've said that and then, did, you know, didn't pray. If I didn't pray in that moment, it didn't cross my mm -hmm. mind, I didn't pray. Mm -hmm. But mm. part of the prayer prompt is to stop then and pray with mm. that person or, you know, before life starts happening again and you get distracted. Because if you don't, then you never know how that prayer could have really, really affected them and changed the whole situation or that mood just in that moment. Yeah. Because we say, even when I think about people on the prayer list, it'd be so many people on the prayer list but then we only say like two or three things. Mm -hmm. But I think if we take the time and call out, you know, so the person can hear, that can change their whole, mm -hmm. you know, anything. To know to that you're know, praying. Yeah. You know, that they're praying because some, sometimes all you need is a little prayer. Just like a smile or a hug. You know, all you need is that little something to give you that push. There was a sister in Galveston at church uh, that said something that really hit home that I thought about, but it, it just to, th to hear somebody else thinking about this too, that we hear these names on the prayer list week after week, and sometimes the list gets longer and longer, and the opportunity comes for praise reports. There are not many praise reports, but there's this long laundry list of prayer requests, and where are the prayers that are being answered? That's, you know, that that is one thing that I do love about uh, the testimonies that NBC has amassed throughout the years that we have several people and testaments, even, uh, you know, even though Deacon Ellison ended up passing away, how many times did God keep him after we prayed for him, you know, and so many prayers over and over that God has answered. And so, you know, we, I think we have to really look at the intention. That's why it, it still baffles me. Like if I didn't have to play for two churches and serve in that capacity, I wouldn't be doing it because I miss prayer meeting. I miss the in-depth Sunday school. I miss that. And uh, it's just, you know, that's, 
that's one of the things I think about with the Potter's House too, is just what kind of teaching and tools are available for you to really go you in depth. Bishop, I got some mighty teachers over there. Oh my God. You, you, but you know it. You know that. And so just, you know, just being able to have access to this and, and it's just a blessing to see God calling us into greater and causing us to grow through all of this. We have not attained. That's the that same statement that Paul, I have not attained, but I yet press that we are yet in the press, that we are we are working and striving toward getting. You said something earlier, and it was it, it reminded me of what uh, Pastor Roberts also said that God has already worked it out. We're just walking it out. Mm -hmm. And that that really stood out to me because just I think I shared this with you too, that uh, I'm thinking about those moments where we were suicidal and depressed and just wanted to give up and all of this and it looked bleak and it looked dire like the situation was over. And God is up there in his comedian mode, laughing at us because he knows that he's already worked out that we're going to come out, that we're going to come through this, that we're going to overcome. And he's just laughing, saying, I, I, I look forward to, to you when you realize that I was going to bring you out all along. Yeah, yeah. And because sometimes in the middle of it, we don't see it. And show can begin to even be, believe that some of the stuff you can overcome and get through. But we're here because we did. Okay. We hear, but instead of rushing to help, we judge, criticize, and condemn. I'm sick of that. I, I, you know, the, the rushing to judge, the rushing, people are rushing to criticize. People rush to condemn. Do we rush to pray? Do we rush to help? And that's sad that that is the, that's the first response instead of being, instead of being just off the table to do that, that judging, criticizing is the first response. I, I just can't get with that, especially what I've been through. My first response is concern. My first response is is prayer. You know, this is off topic, but when I read this, well, when I'm re listening to it, it made me think about it's been what two, two or three weeks now that Bishop had this whole oh, issue. issue going on. And look how they drug his name. And now you don't hear anything. Mm -hmm. But they people are still saying out. little stuff, but it's still they, it's yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's always gonna be something, child. Always condemnation, always criticism, always judgment. But while we are keyboard bullies, mm -hmm. what if somebody was to walk in your house or your shoes? How would you feel if they did it to you? Mm -hmm. I don't think we realize that if we can switch positions with a person, you remember Parent Trap? Or oh, no, you probably don't watch stuff like that. But yeah. there were shows where you would switch with the mm -hmm. other person mm -hmm. and you would know what it feel like, like lifestyle. I'm telling you, I don't watch kids. shows like that. I've watched shows like that. Thank you. Okay. See, I just <laughs> judged you. Yes, you should did. <laughs> but we don't think about if the she was on the other foot. Well, how would you feel in that moment being judged, criticized, and condemned when it could literally be you? It could be you, but God is covering you, you know, for whatever reason, the grace and mercy, we know, but he chose for it not to be you, but we don't realize, we don't think about that stuff. We just say and do and just say and say and say and say and say, but he can turn it and actually help a person, it goes right back to what we've been talking about this whole time, how I can save them. Mm -hmm. You don't know how quick a person is holding on. And we say these three, three, we do these three actions and don't put no words, no positivity behind it. Mm -hmm. No, no kind of reinforcement. Nope. Human beings are much better in, at inflicting pain than enduring pain. We had rather hurt others, even though even those already hurting, then feel the hurt ourselves. Hmm. Our dreams are deferred again and again. That I remember talking about that because it just seems like it's continually being deferred. The same blows of life, 
Everyone allowed the crushing, not everyone allowed the crushing to destroy them. The secret of making wine out of the remaining juice. The blood of the vine becomes the fruit of the cup. So this must be where we stop. Blood tells uh, them just about everything they need to know in order to understand what is working and not working within the human body. This is with medical professions. And it also shows that each person involved in a crime is linked to the blood that was spilled. I thought that was interesting. All of it was interesting. How he broke it down, I was like, the blood, honey. Mm -hmm. And that the blood bears witness, you know, that that's what that's that's what I really got out of it, how the blood bears witness to what has happened. And then he even goes on to talk about uh, Cain and Abel and how uh, mm -hmm. Abel's blood was crying out from the ground, you know. And a lot of times we think that we've gotten away with it, but that blood is still speaking. We cannot celebrate the resurrection without lingering at the crushing of Christ on the cross. Jesus was crushed in every way, physically beaten, emotionally isolated, and spiritually bereft. Oh, that just hit home, hit home, hit home. That was page 83. Did you have anything? No, 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 it's good. Okay. <laughs> have I just only been sharing through the reading, Shantan? I mean, you've been sharing, but I'm saying you ain't sharing from the reading, okay? Well, it's... Pretty much self. I mean, it's, it's not much you can say. Y'all got to get the blood. book. Yeah, I yeah, mean, y'all got to get the book. The blood. Is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perspective can create. Then this is what I was talking about. Can create an insensitivity to the broader view of others. You, the way you see it, really does matter, and. Sometimes we need to just give people grace, understanding that they may not share the same perspective as us. And sometimes there's nothing you can say or do to change that perspective, that person's perspective. Only God can do that. And so that's when you learn, you know, to me, that's part of growth. That's part of spiritual maturity and wisdom is learning that. In uh, in most cases, it's not my my job to try and change your perspective. It is my duty to pray for you and to to show you love and to give you grace through your growth process as well. Because uh, a lot of things that we're coming into the knowledge of a wrong perspective about things, uh, just like we've had we've had this whole conversation today about touching our neighbor. You know, it's been about our perspective, but. Think about how that perspective that we we had created an insensitivity to the broader view of those that are sitting around around us. You know, we thinking that that's just another person who showed up to church too, and and they probably thinking the same thing that we are thinking that they don't want to touch their neighbor and all that time. And some some people are ready to uh, in need of a touch, and we're insensitive to it. We can never celebrate without including the crushing. That made me think about, uh, again, you know, the bishop was talking about in one chapter about celebrating Independence for, yeah, Independence Day, and that you cannot really fully celebrate some any time to me uh, without thinking about all the hardships that have all also been overcome to get to celebration. I mean, you know, that's crazy because I uh, have thought about. Okay, we go back to school on Monday, the 8th. The 15th, we out for Martin Luther King Day. Mm -hmm. All we're thinking about is it's a day off. Mm -hmm. But Martin Luther King went through some things for he us really to be did. able to... For a national holiday? For a national holiday. A national holiday? <laughs> Truth. <sighs> the difference between our creator's emotions are is that his emotions are pure and haven't been corrupted by the stain of sin. At the sight of his son dying and becoming the representation of evil that has so infected the human heart that it tore God apart. He was talking about uh, the moment when the earth was blackened and people were trying to explain that phenomenon. And he was 
saying that we are made in God's image and we have emotions and that we see God's emotions you know, on display throughout the word. And so as he's watching his son enduring suffering uh, for humanity, that you can't, can't you imagine all light being sucked out and God being sorrowful in that time? <sighs> what just what a thought. All for us. And you know, it was a it was something in here. Let me see. Oh yeah, I'm getting to it. Okay, so so few of his own people received him, even at the sacrifice of what Jesus did. So many of so few of his own people even received him. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. God did all of this. He sent his son uh, to be offered on our behalf and that even within the tribe of Israel, his own people, so few of them even received him. Isn't that something? Jesus was, was without honor in his own home. But this is what I was talking about. Jesus reached backward and forward through time to grab hold of every sin humanity would commit. In you know, just thinking when I think of that in in just my finite perspective, it brings me back to Jesus laying down his deity. But in this moment, he's picking back up his deity, which gives him the insight. And this is this is what kind of is mind blowing to me: the insight into every. Mm. Do you hear me now? Okay, Shantae, you may not feel, you know, the depth of how I'm feeling this, but I look at what I know about Ja'Cory. But it made me think about, oh, what a privilege. Shantae, I, I know <laughs> what I know about me. I know a little about you. I know a little about some other people, but he knows everything about everybody everything about every just just imagine okay this is this is the this is the this is another thought if it is to be a document written with every human and their list of sins documented within the document their sins of error, their, sin, their, their sins of issue, all their sins, each individual. How long would it take us to read? I'm talking about every, we, we have billions of people living on the planet now. That's, that's, that's even, child, uh, each individual probably have billions of sins. <laughs> And so then you compact all of that on top of because it starts it starts to compound it starts to compound sin because I sin here it's I I'm sinning here and I'm sinning here and I'm sinning here, this sin and then it's just because it's too much and all of that that is not one that he did not die for like every sin. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm I'm steady trying to dive deeper into this because I'm thinking of the intention of him to specifically pinpoint that sin, that one sin within you, and die for it. And then that one and blotting them out, blotting them out. How long? What what does that take? Look at the cost that it cost him to effectively be able to do that. <sighs> yeah, I, it, I was looking forward to getting back to that place. Me, it makes me think, you know, we always talk about how we go through things in Christ with a person that don't know Christ. How do they do, you know, how do they go through? Mm -hmm. and it makes Absolutely. Me think, mm -hmm. We think about those, We, you know, like now, of course, my mind is thinking like, oh my God, like, you know, you've been sinning since you were a little kid. And here I am, 34, and all the accumulation of sins oh, that I've wait. accumulated oh, since oh, a, a child. Yes. Oh, my God. Before I even knew I was sinning, I was sinning. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
And then the fact that it has compounded and compounded and compounded. Oh, sweet Jesus. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. We and to think that he yet sacrificed and and saw, you know, the thing is that, see, that he sees us worthy of the sacrifice. But the thing about it, and it is what a privilege, because without it, we we have no hope. So, you know, uh, somebody the you know, the songwriter said he didn't have to he, he didn't have to do it, you know, or, or why did he do it? Because he had to do it. If he did not do it, there was no one else to do it. It could not be done. So God made a way for it to be done. And he, I mean, he had to, he had to. One of the things I think about for, uh, from Pastor Roberts when he was saying that from the foundations of the world, God, uh, God had already prepared Jesus to be offered up. And he did that because he knew that humanity was going to fall. And I, you know, just for me is why even create humanity? Why even allow us to go through all of that if you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's all, you know, to me, it also comes back to the love story of he did it, it you know, that he, 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 he has written the greatest love story ever known is even though it's, you know, we look at these movies that's filled with all these things and these ups and the downs, uh, but we see this in the love story with God and humanity. Uh, there's just a little bit more, and I think we can end at this next session, uh, Chrono from Crushing, at the accompanying earthquake as the heaving and pushing of a wound that was struggling to birth the newness placed in it by the seed of Jesus' sacrificial death. Talking about the earthquake that shook the planet uh, when Jesus died. Uh, the seed of a sacrificial savior, uh, the planting of that seed, and then without crushing, there would be no crowning. I think so. Thing made me think of the song, No Cross. No Crown. Yeah. Yeah. What do we, what do we have to, you know, it brings me back to our, our, well, my top three and those that inspire us, uh, we look at their glory. We see them in this high and lifted up place. But uh, I think you brought it to light, too, that even Oprah still dealing with stuff. Tyler is still de dealing with stuff. We know Bishop is dealing with stuff. And we see, we see their names in light and we see the glory. But and, and yes, you know, even even as we're doing this show. I can imagine one day being able to do this with the production team standing around and people uh, at our beck and call to help us produce the show and come up with ideas and, and being able to do uh, JLT's favorite things and things that we like and, and, and sharing uh, the locations that we've been, that we really, in, you know, the different aspects of our lives that we would like to share with other people. But then also as you evolve, and the show evolves and becomes this global kind of thing, what you would endure. Like, and you know, it's so sad that my thought instantly goes to, really? <laughs> we know that something's going to come with it. You know it. Oh. And you know, I'm thinking, of, thinking about the question we endure now. The things that people are saying now in in this small place, and you know, and not despising right. the small and beginning, the but then just imagine if it was us being trolled and blasted in the comments, and you know, I've seen even uh, watching Madam Secretary, you 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 get a first seat uh, show to people. Uh, Keyboard bullying, as you said. And it's like, you have to understand, just like Bishop said, that these people are saying these things and, and you have to find out who is this person? Have we ever even met? Do they even, do we even know each other? And they saying this level of stuff? Lord have mercy. But no crushing, no crown. I, you know, 
No crushing no fruit. No crushing no wine. To say this, but it's like no crushing in the crowd. But it's like I know it can't be another way, but words hurt. That stuff hurts. I don't think you know. I I think growing up in elementary, you hear whatever the little you remember the little sticks and stones may break my bone, but words will never. Why it says that? I don't either. Somebody because, lied, child. Somebody well, lied. Since we were little. Because mm -hmm. that's not true. If mm -hmm. you you can forget something that happened quicker than you can fix, forget something that's that was said. Yeah. Because you relive that, you know, that's in your brain and you've heard it. And you know, you say one in one ear out the other, but it's not that's not really true. It's it's like it it forms with your brain, you know, and with I was thinking about when you said the production team and the stuff. I was thinking, how would I really feel with somebody sitting here recording me and, you know, telling me begin or something like that? I'm like, you know, we start when we want to start. That's you right. know, like we That's stop right. when we want to stop. Yeah. How would I handle would I start frowning or something like that? You know, it comes with it. Yeah. Oh. And that that is the professional part of it. Lord prepare. And and my you know my thought in it is I like to go on and go on until we stop. You know what I'm saying? For go go as long as we want to go, but then you have a time limit, and so you know then that's why you able to bring it and do it on your own in these type of setting, or have multiple platforms to do it because there is so much to talk about with this life, and the the thought about our having conversations about life is to actually say something that's going to uplift someone, something that's going to encourage someone because we have been shattered, we have been crushed, and we know how that feels. And so if we really understand it and grow in understanding how that feels, then we we start to feel the responsibility to be there to help somebody else. That's why both of us took the life coaching classes, to be able to better ourselves at being able to assist others. And um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to being able to start this next track in life coaching because when I believe that, you know, the music, God hadn't allowed the music to really take off like I wanted it to or believed that it was going to because there are some other things that I need to take hold of to have on the journey, to have in my tool chest for when they do take off. And so that's, that's you know, I, I've been praying here recently about my niche. What is it? Because- Your niche? My thing, yeah. Oh, okay. Because, you know, Good Soil asked me, what makes you unique? Mm -hmm. And I've really been dealing with that. You know, you send me those words and- uh, Did you pick- No. Because the thing about it is, uh, I feel like a lot of people could take those words and say that they feel those things about them. You know what I'm saying? You but what so makes me word. unique? I don't know if it's just a word. She, Tanya sent me, a, she, she said something, something, and I feel like maybe I could take some of those words and integrate them in oh, and so add my own word. Are you looking for... Like a, I need at least a. I, I want to get at least one or two sentence statement oh, about what I feel. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, so I didn't like that. No, uh, okay. because that just to me that's that's just not unique. If they would ask us for one word, I, I I wouldn't have even. I don't even think I would have tried to put any thought so into it. Together, I was like, yeah. Well, how do you sum up one person with one word? Yeah, I don't. I'm, uh, it's not one word, but okay. it's that that really has caused me to take a, a deeper look because we know we're still here for something. There is something that we're here to do. And last night I went to uh, Clanisa's show, and she gave me like two minutes on stage just mm -hmm. to do an on the spot. And it was with a live band, something I've been dreaming to do for some time now. I've really been wanting to do that. But, you know, I'm looking at the ones who are in the band like they didn't really want me to do it. I'm looking at the audience while I'm singing who are really just not interested. I'm trying to get them involved 
and they talking to each other. They like, I'm not even up on stage, but there was like one girl who was taking pictures and videoing. And I'm thinking, okay, somebody sees me up here. This moment is not wasted, but this is also a dream come true. And on the opposite side of that, okay, God, now I've done this thing and I've had this experience. I still want to try to do it some more and really have a band that we're we're connected and in a room that's welcoming of what I have to offer. Uh, but where do I belong? Where am I supposed to have the impact that I believe you've left me here for? What is all this crushing been for? You know, that's that's what I'm leaving today's broadcast and get in prayer about. But I feel like all of this is is leading us to that answer, leading us to why we are here, why all of the crushing that we've been through was so necessary, even even in thinking about why the shattering. I'm sitting here, I, I keep on seeing this in my peripheral and knowing that this is what you have planned. And I'm not telling y'all because you got to come to the cuffs and then maybe we'll come out during the conference. But you, so crazy that you said that just now, because I mean, I know, you know, but Tuesday we go to the prison and I really cannot remember who said anything about shatter? But that's the prison we're going to. Oh wow! And I really wish I could remember who said it. You don't know. You wouldn't know. You don't know, do you? I probably would know the inmate if I saw him. If you saw their face, okay, okay. I I, I have I had a thought. I'm just thinking I may need to just drive because I had come I didn't know about the prison Tuesday. You, you, you did know. Am I supposed to be going? You just probably forgot because we talked about it. I don't remember us talking about prison for me going. Yeah, I may have talked about it, but I don't remember anything about me supposed to be going this Tuesday. Uh, but anyway, uh, I may drive because it's some some vibe something that they go to where it's live music and kind of the same type of thing and you just sing to the music that's playing and so I'm going to go and try that again uh, so I may go and do prison ministry and then go do that and we'll see but you know what one thing that I do feel is when we go into prison ministry that I belong there Me that too. I belong that I'm supposed to be there doing that there's no doubt yeah there's no doubt. That now that's that's a non-negotiable. Some of these church services I possibly could do without. Uh and you know, yeah. and I in in I said that. Yeah. Like it's a it's just like the potter's house. It's a, a difference. difference. It's like worship is different there, you feel different there, your comfortability is that even a word is different there. But I'm you know what I'm gonna rewind it back to is the expectation of the people that's coming. Mm -hmm. Those prisoners those inmates when they come in there they're praying i believe they are praying mm -hmm. that somebody comes in and says something that's going to help them to be able to help them get through their time uh, when people go to the potter's house they are looking for the potter to really do something something even again even if that expectation is for a deal or or to meet bishop or to meet somebody else that's there or mm -hmm. to yeah, whatever the people are coming with that expectation when we go to church on Sundays what are we expecting what what is the expectation have we gotten dry in our expectation of what we come to the house of God for and if so what do we do to stir that up well God bless you to each of you all oh did you have something else? but it just made me think about you remember when I went to get the water and I told you that the girl said she moved to Dallas, didn't know what she was going to do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And all that. And, and she's she found purpose, out just what she needed from selling water at, you know, in the coffee shop at, at the potter's house. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? But there's no telling who comes back there to get water from her that she's then able to minister to and just, you know, be a she blessing. She's so much like myself more than I felt in years. And I'm like, wow, just, just set working in the coffee shop. Wow. And I, you know, when, you know, asking about the child care and stuff like that, but she was just like, it's so many opportunities. So wow. many.
So you just, it, it's a difference. She found her, what you call it? Niche. Niche. Niche, niche she, or whatever niche. you said. She found it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we better both hum. Okay, well, we yet praying, yet believing. And like, now, one thing that I do believe is doing these shows, I feel so as Jay Bass. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is me being on camera, being able to talk and to converse and have conversations with people. And just, I've, I've always had that desire to just get to know people and, and to share about our life experiences and stuff. So I feel, I know this is part of the niche too, that being able to have these shows, to be able to have these conversations is something that I love being able to do. Uh oh, you're... Uh oh. Okay. Well, God bless you all. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the J Tay Show. God bless you. Thanks. Of the year. For Sunday. <laughs> it's the J Tay Show. It's the J Tay Show. It's the J Tay Show. It's the J Tay Show.